Okay, so I'm going to do a practice session making a little wine glass with a captive ring um, because I'm running a class on it and I thought I'd better actually have a go at doing one. The old tennis ball or squash ball trick now comes in handy just to stabilise it as you thin the neck down. So after that little bit of final shaping using the skew which produced a beautiful polished finish just going to reduce the shaft down in diameter. I'm going to try and do two captive rings, one on either side of like a central thickening in the shaft. You want to leave the shaft thick enough throughout while you're doing this so that you don't get any whip and that it doesn't snap off. So now the first little bit of shaping of the outside of the ring with the 3 8 uh, spindle gouge. And with the outside shape vaguely sorted out, start doing a bit of an undercut with the spindle gouge to start defining the underside of the ring. These are just the first cuts to remove some of the waste with the 3 8 before I swap to a pointier tool. So now I'm using the quarter inch spindle gouge ground with quite a point. Key thing with all this is you've got to have enough clearance for the tool to be able to sweep underneath and remove enough of the stem so that eventually, uh, if you do it on both sides, it parts off. Uh, with this ring it would have been better if I'd actually thinned the stem down a bit more. It would have made it easier to get the spindle gouge underneath. But it still worked and it then was parted off. And of course after that I had to go back and thin the rest of the shaft down to free it up completely. I kept the shaft fairly thick for stability. Ideally, of course, it should be thinner for aesthetics. Now it's just a question of getting some abrasive in there to sand the inside. Some people wrap it around the shaft, and possibly if the shaft was thin enough, you could do it whilst it was moving. I felt I wanted to keep my fingers, so I just uh, tucked it around there and finished it off by hand. And then on to the second ring, uh, leaving a, a slight uh, thickening of the shaft so that the ring stays on either side of it. Same process as before, but I decided to do the parting off this time with a thin parting tool, which I actually think is a lot easier to get in uh, and around the corner without worrying about the wings of the spindle gouge catching. But it does give you a bit of a raggedy bottom, which you then need to clean up and finish off with your spindle gouge.
and then after you've got the profile that you want, including the little bead in the middle, sand up and finish off the base. The rings are fairly delicate at this point, it's worth masking taping them into position while you do all your finishing. This is the time to thin the shaft down to whatever shape and thickness that you want because uh, the stress is now off from doing those uh, catty rings. Uh, with the shaft done, I needed to rather inelegantly tape up the rings again so that I could then finish off the final profile of the base. So with it almost parted off but still supported by the nub end, finish the sanding and then some friction polish before removing the bottom and trimming it off outside off the lathe. 